So this is the book that I am using in the class to do the color studies and it's Shakespeare, The Merry Wives of Windsor. And I just thought the book was so beautiful. And I love this little um, book plate with the signature who it belonged to, Joseph. And so this is the, the lesson that we're gonna be doing to mix our colors. And I love doing that before I start anything. And I decided to turn it into an art journal. So I, to make things a little easier, I painted a page. Okay, so I went ahead and painted this page just so that I could move to the next um, lesson with you. So I'm gonna, what I did was I just took the little binder clips and put them here. So I didn't put gesso on the page ahead of time. I used the paint that I'm using in the class. I have this Magnolia paint and the two colors I'm using in the class are Wedding Band and Weathered Windmill. I think I wrote the wrong name in the class, but it's um, Weathered Windmill. And I went to my hardware store and they carry this line and they have these little samples that are in white and they just pre-mix it. And, um, it's been great. I've done it, used a, a lot of it um, for different things too. So after it dried, I, I put just a thin coat of clear gesso over it just so I have a little grit on the page. And I left a little bit of the, the words from underneath. So I went through and gathered some pieces that I, I'm still in this mode of conversations and the final piece that I create in the class is this conversation with myself. <laughs> and so I'm kind of still there. I can't move past it. So I have little pieces um, from my box and these are pieces that I pulled out um, before I started the class. So they're still like in my, on my work table. And I want to use some of these and put together just a small collage. And I had this piece that I had torn out and stitched so that gave me the idea. So I had another one that I drew that was on the same paper. So I pulled her out and then I made a copy of her and we're going to be doing this type of copying. Um, I just put it through my printer. It's um, overhead transparency and I'll tell you more about how to do this in the lesson. So I have this right now. It's part of my jumping off point. And I have this really beautiful page. It's from a French book and I love these little men here. I don't know what's going on. They're just deep in conversation. So I pulled it, it was one of those things. So the first thing I wanna do, because I, I really love this little piece of, I have a couple of them and I use them in the collage, this vintage wallpaper. So I thought what I would do is just start with a background, just a sketch. And you could write something on the background, kind of, your thoughts, your conversations that you're having with yourself, your grocery list, a recipe, whatever you want, just write something. But I decided that I was just gonna do a little botanical sketch. So I'm using um, this Peel and Sketch Soft, and I also have um, some vine charcoal, which I may use. So I'm just gonna have it kind of drift across the page, and I'll probably be covering it up, but I'm holding my pencil back from the edge and I'm just going to use this as my inspiration. I'm not gonna try and copy it exactly because I want this to connect. And then I'm just going to loosely exaggerate the leaves and the little buds. And this, um, this is something I do quite often in my sketchbooks and my art journal is I will just put some loose sketches down just to loosen myself up and to practice. And sometimes I get covered up. I'll take a real flower and I'll study it and do the same thing. Okay, so since I'm using this peel and sketch, it works really nicely. It's water soluble, so you can kind of move it around a little bit. 
I'll do a little bit coming off to the side here. Okay, so I have a water. Oh, actually, I think what I'm going to do too is I want to demonstrate this. So I have the I like to use the vine charcoal, and it helps. It gives me another little bit darker line. And when you hold it back, it's very. It you can really work on the looseness. And I'll use this um, sometimes when I'm drawing a face because you can't you can't control it really. So I'll just you know, put a few little darker spots over there. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of water and I'm just gonna move some of this around. And if I have any other loose charcoal, then I'll just spray a fixative on top of it if I feel like I need to. And if you don't like something, you can just smudge it a little with the paper towel drips all right so there we go so now i want to think about let's just um the let that dry a bit and so the next the next step i would do is i i got this because i tore her out i want to do the same thing here so i'm going to just tear around her. And my thoughts for this little collage, since I'm kind of staying with this conversation with myself, so this woman is kind of representing my life, that chapter in my life when I was dancing professionally, choreographing professionally, and the many conversations that <laughs> went through my head. But also I'm in this place now where it's, you know, this part of my career as a choreographer and dancer is, oh, I almost cut off her head, has kind of shifted and that's okay, I can fix that. Edges, the different edges of this kind of showing through. This is always the tricky part with collage is how many different ways can I turn this? If I'm in an overlap 
um, a lot and only have a, a little bit hanging out. I want to save some of the paper, especially this with this handwriting on it. I like that. Okay. All right. I think that. So I also have in here these little pieces and I want to bring in this because I like this texture of these pieces especially these little threads and these are from you know the inside of the book spine and I like building up much like I did in the the lesson that we're going to do I'm kind of building up with pieces of um, the paper so okay so I found this second act and I think it's representing you know my second act in life like the first half was you know more in the professional world of dance and it was all about my dance career and then you know I found I found creating art to be something that filled that void that something I needed uh, and I know many of us feel that way so I'm kind of looking at this as thinking on my second act <laughs> teaching teaching art and taking everything I learned as a dancer and teacher for so many years and bringing it to my art and communicating that with people. Okay. So I think I'm going to do a little stitch here. I find doing this, like I, I start thinking about it. I start thinking about how, where are the piece is going and it also seems to be kind of a launching pad for other work. And by creating the class that I just did, the conversations, I have more ideas and that's why I want to turn this into an art journal to see what else I can create, what other kind of pieces I can create, just keep moving. Because I, sometimes I think you know, it, it can be challenging to think about, well, what am I creating? You know, you practice, you practice the techniques, you practice your drawing, painting, but then you want to make art, you want the idea to be your own, to be something that comes from you. And I think by, you know, working, when you take a class from someone, you, you take those ideas and then you swirl them into your own and create your own um, it's a jumping off point. Okay. So I think I want that. And I'm going to bring in second act in here somehow. Sure. So I'm going to start gluing some things down now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the first layer. We're going to make a big mess with matte medium. Okay. So I would take a picture of this and then I'm just going to move it over kind of in its order since I'm not taking a picture of it. Okay, so this one I'm going to, because it's a very fragile piece of paper and there's a staple in it that I like, but I don't think it's going to show. I'm going to use matte medium. One second, sorry. Okay. Put a little bit here. And I'm just going to put it on the back, and I think it'll preserve this paper. It's so old and fragile, but very cool. I think it was a pattern for an embroidery pattern. So when you're working in your journal, someone asked me last week, um, you know, just getting organized and how it, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming with all the things we have. So by limiting the colors you use, the materials you use, and just getting a small stack of things that you're drawn to at the moment, then, and just work with that and see how you can kind of, it's the theme and variation. How can you manipulate this and make it in and take it further? Okay, so then the next piece, 
we go. Do the same thing here. I like this, I like the color of this parchment paper. It's gonna crinkle up a little bit, that's okay. Okay, and it's okay, I don't see the flower underneath, but I'm fine with that. It was just there to get started because sometimes it's more challenging to just begin. Now I'm going to put the rest of this down. Even though this is very fragile, I'm just gonna go with it and put the yes paste on it. Because I want that kind of ruffliness. I don't know if that's even a word, ruffliness. I just made it up of the paper. I don't want it to flatten out. And if I feel like it's getting, you know, too beat up in my art journal, then I might eventually put another coat of matte medium over it. I think I'll be fine with it. All right. So I want to make sure I have a little piece hanging out at the bottom so I can see the layers. transparency and I want it to be on here but I'm not gonna glue it I need to trim the edges a little so I like that the flower is going to show through it's really kind of beautiful and then I want to add her so that she's kind of looking through herself and there we go. Then I have this little swatch here that I want to put somewhere, but I'm not sure where it's going to go yet. Now I could fill her entire skirt up with stitches, but that could be very boring for you to watch. <laughs> so I'm not going to do, oh wait a minute, why don't I just do something like this? That could be very boring for you to watch. So, all right, how am I going to attach this? Make sure I get her in the right place. I like this little image here and the flowers coming through. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is take the stapler because I'm working in my art journal and that's okay. Let's put a few of them here. Okay. And then I'll just, maybe I'll just leave that there. Put one down here. And it's not perfectly straight.
think I need to do a little stitching in here again. I won't do a lot, just do a little bit. And I think I'll tear off some of her dress that's hanging over, or maybe not. I kind of like it when it goes, it's like those little collages that I did a few weeks ago when I showed you from Storytellers where I have things going off the edge of the page and I, I do like that. So I might just leave that. Let's see if the, oh, I kind of like it. It's kind of fun. So I do like this things hanging over the edge. It may get torn off later and I, I might give it a little spray of a fixative or something. But um, for right now, I'm, I'm pretty happy it's fun. So I'm gonna kind of build this, this book and I like this color palette with the neutrals and this burnt sienna. I may go into some ochres later, but I like this blue gray color that I've been using. And it might be fun just to see 
how far I can explore using this very limited color palette and bringing in this idea of conversations and where it's going to take me. So I might dedicate this book to that and then see if I can bring in, um, you know, do create some more art, some more abstracts, some more collages, these little pages of ideas that I have.